Hello, Chris. Hey, mate. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, fantastic. How about you? Yeah, good. Yeah, no, crystal clear. I'm on house Wi-Fi, so I may need to lose the uh, video at some point, given uh, I'm on limited bandwidth. But yeah, I'll be, I'll be here. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on phone. I'm still at the conference, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's intermittent. I'm having um, I'm having our cupboard that's got our patch cabinet in sorted out. So I have no Ethernet for like three days. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in the world of mobile. Hello, Shireen. How you doing? Shireen, you're on mute for some reason. I'm on mute. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Shireen. Hello. Sorry. How are you doing? <laughs> Rebecca, hi, how are you doing? Rebecca, can you hear us? I can, yes. Fantastic. So just to say, this session will be recorded and uh, if you don't want to share any, any material that you don't feel comfortable sharing, just, just for <coughs> your information, I'm, I'm recording it. Uh, probably this session I'm just going to distribute it for the internal community but I'm looking forward for maybe next sessions to do them more publicly so I'm going to start a poll on the um, I'm going to start a poll on the Slack community to see what's the interest on, on converting this into a podcast Hey Chani Hi How are you doing? I'm okay, how are you? I'm alright, I'm alright Public frustration at the Sorry, I can't hear you. One second. There hasn't been. Let me go on mute. Actually, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, cool. So let's give us five minutes more or less, so people can join. Okay. I think my headset's not working. It's it's echoing. I guess. No, actually, I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. Cool. How are you doing? Good, tired. I did panel yesterday. Uh, I did a panel yesterday. I was on boot duty, so I was a boot baby. <laughs> 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 and today I did boot duty. I did the uh, keynote here, and we just we just managed to dismantle the boot and and logo. Oh, you mean like a stand? Yeah, we <laughs> we had a stand. So how I was, was a the boot conference? baby. The oh, conference was, was actually. The Good. conference was actually great. It's 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 interesting because they mix AI, IoT, cloud security. Uh, so it was a good mix. You you don't you didn't see the same old faces. It was people in the industry, a lot of investor, a lot of people from Asia coming here to actually understand more. So it was definitely interesting mix. It's not the, the classic and traditional cybersecurity conference so i have to say I'm, I'm i'm really really satisfied with the breadth and depth of people that i met great hi chris hey how you doing i'm good thanks you yeah i'm very well yeah apologies for lack of video i was just saying to francesca my uh, my wi-fi here in my house at the moment is absolutely terrible so i'll just dip in and constantly have freezing frames but uh i'm no, very pleased to be here you, don't worry, I can be the face of it. <laughs> you, why don't you be? Yeah, we'll, we'll leave you to be the face of things today. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I'm also probably going to turn off. <laughs> it's, um, the, the, challenge, <laughs> yeah, the challenge comes when your screen just freezes, then you're like, has the person heard what I said? And I, <laughs> so, yeah. No, I had that challenge when I'm in HSBC. Yeah. Why the change to Zoom? Sorry, because I can record in here. So yeah, I'm, I'm recording this session. Remember the last time we had that debacle and debate on recording. So I bought a you call. You recorded Google Hangout as well, you know. I know, but I can't. You frozen now. <laughs> yeah, you frozen. Just this is exactly my point. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> brilliant. <laughs> Almost right on cue. That was brilliant. <laughs> Am I still frozen? Or oh, you can hear me, all right? We yeah, can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I'll be there. I'll be just a static face of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say we, we made a move. So in my last role, we made a move from um, WebEx to Zoom. And yeah, I, I think it's, it's really good. I think of, of, and the various platforms that I use for various different engagements, it's probably the best. I really like it. They just went in uh, IPO of recent, I think. And their share just skyrocketed as soon as the IPO started. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. And Slack, Slack went today, I hear. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, is it today? It might, it might, it's very imminent, shall we say. And I, I can only guess that that will do similarly. Yeah, interesting. A lot of them. I mean, Uber, Uber is collecting firepower. I was talking with the guys of Lyft and they just went IPO, but it was a bit of a bloodbath yeah. for them. It wasn't great, was it? No, and I think there is a lot of expectation for Uber on the same, to yeah, be on, yeah. the, on the same. So there is a lot of expectation, but they, they're aiming for one of the biggest IPO ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah, completely. I, can see, I could see that happening. Yeah, a lot of expectation. It seems to be sexy in the, in the Silicon Valley to be in massive loss, though. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, yeah. We need to build a company that just loses money and just gets <laughs> a lot of good shares. Yeah. It seems to be the trend now. Anyway, I think we are, yeah, six minutes in. Shall we give it a start? Yeah. Sounds good. So let me do, so the way we do this usually is with the round table of the host and then uh, of the extended community. And then I'll give a couple of teams. So the team of today will probably be, since we have Chris online, I wanted to talk about how to talk to a CISO, what's the role of a CISO in an organization like Tanium, uh, and how to become a CISO. So how, for, for you, Chris, share a little bit of your part, and then we open up the, the forum to question and, and discussion. Sounds good. Sounds good. So why don't you start introducing yourself? Yeah, that's a, probably a good place to start, right? So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm Chris Hodson. I've been in this industry for, what I say now, like 17, 18 years in, in various different um, roles. So I spent, I suppose, the majority, if you take it in years anyway, the majority of my time in end user world, as I will, as someone who now works for a vendor, I just, it's just colloquially referred to as end user world, right? So did a lot of time in financial services, I worked for Lloyds Bank as a consultant, the same at Deutsche, various other kind of short term kind of contracting and, and consultancy gigs. Um, what else have I worked in? Retail. I used to be the, the head of security over at Waitrose and did some work sort of short term at places like Tesco as well. And I've, I've worked in various different industries, but also in different roles, right? So I took, I think you could kind of delineate CISOs into, I'm interested in your view on this as well, actually, Francesco, into kind of two buckets really, or two kind of paths to where they are. You've got the what I see as the business leader, I think that's still as valid today as it, as it has been to so the guy or the, or the lady who's been in an organization for a period of time, an extensive period of time as an executive. They may have worked in finance, they may have worked in HR, they may have worked in kind of areas of the core business. They have such a, I suppose, holistic understanding of the business that, that moving them into a, a security role sort of suits um, sort of suits their background and suits their experience in the company because they know who to speak to when to speak to them and they probably understand business risk and how risk is evaluated in a company right now that's not the route that i took (laughs) that's the opposite route so mine was a very technical route so i started um many moons ago actually uh with an idea of maybe being a software developer so i remember being at college and working with kind of vb5 vb6 um a lot of scripting languages thinking maybe that's the the kind of direction that that I take and you know I still stay to this day you know reasonably technical I still like to keep my hand in with with kind of contemporary technologies and and various kind of development opportunities but I I really wanted to kind of extend a, a curiosity or an enthusiasm for my childhood of understanding how things work and then understanding how you break them right? <laughs> generally speaking and and that lends itself very well to to a security role so you know, a lot of time passed and I went through a fairly kind of, I suppose it's traditional technical track that you see a lot of people go down of, you know, Microsoft being the the prevalent or pervasive kind of operating system organization that they were in kind of mid nineties through to, um, you know, the mid noughties, I, yeah, the mid noughties, I would say probably extending it from there as well of being kind of the only platform other than server OS is with the kind of Nix world that, that you saw. So did my MCSE, you got to that crossroads of which electives do you do? Do you do database? Do you do messaging? Do you do security? 
sadly i think i did all i think i did all three but, <laughs> all networking but I, all networking all networking yeah 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 that's right you because that, that's the branch i took exactly oh, the, same, the same path i did but that's it right you get to a point where you, you you kind of you kind of force down this route of you know you you think oh it's only one or two more exams so i did the um i did the security one and and it was i wouldn't say before that point that I had this this view that that, that that being a CISO or working even in in security was kind of the ultimate objective, but it just made sense. Right when I started to look at, um, I suppose the requirements of a role down that route, rather than development, rather than messaging, rather than database analysis. I mean, no, no disrespect to any of those guys. I know some brilliant DBAs, some brilliant guys who work with email, but in security, you, you're getting much more of a, a comprehensive. I suppose a requirement, I should say, rather, to to have a comprehensive understanding and appraisal of an environment, rather than uh, I don't call it a parochial view, but you know, you know, a, 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 a specific view of a of an environment. So I yeah, I spent a lot of time doing my studies as most people did, and then just got a foot in the door with some contracts. So like I said, I spent a lot of time at Lloyd's Bank. I'll be honest, when I first joined Lloyd's, I think I was woefully underqualified to be a security architect and that's that's something that i wrote in the in the kind of preface to my book recently was you know thanks to everyone who put up with me asking lots of questions on the job but that's really where you gain your experience isn't it that's where you identify your your areas that you need to focus on for improvement it's where you identify your your kind of passion and your enthusiasm i think one i of the, think on that point yeah uh, to, to jump on no, i think by, I did I did more or less the same thing. So I changed I change role, and I think by putting yourself in a role that you're not comfortable in, you actually that push you to learn. And maybe people has to put up with you. But as a security, I think we have we have the leisure, if you want, that um, you can't know everything. So yeah, they kind of expect you to be, uh, I don't know, to quote uh, to quote Stu, the, the imposter syndrome. So they kind of expect yeah. you to not be the guy that knows a little bit of everything or everything in, in detail. So on, on that point, I think it's very important that you keep on putting yourself in roles that you're not comfortable with. So you, you kind of grow the skills and then you move on. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think if you go for a role that you know you can do, I think there's a shelf life on that role, isn't there? Both for, both for you and for potentially the organization in their understanding of of where to where to put you in that in that company so i agree i think i think as an industry i think we're quite poor at this i think as an industry we try and sort of pigeonhole people i i, I call it in my book this reverse funnel right so if you're if you're a doctor or you're in the medical profession you go through this fairly kind of linear way of um, progressing through your career right so you you go to university you decide you're going to work in the medical profession you have placements as a as essentially an intern you then work as a gp for many years and then after being a gp you decide you're going to specialize so you know you might want to work in well, a, a, a plethora of different roles within the medical profession you might want to work in neurology you might want to work as someone who's working with sports performance and physio whatever it is you decide you you specialize on an area in cyber and information security i don't know what your views are on, on the call but i feel we do the opposite we, we expect somebody when they come out of um kind of education whatever that level of education is we expect them to understand what they want to do they're, they're immediately immersed into into the world of cyber and it's right you're either going to work in devops or you're going to be a cryptologist or you're going to be a pen tester or you're going to be an architect how possibly are, are people they're, a all, they're all they're all new roles yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly I, I started calling myself an architect uh 10 years ago when the concept was not there and i started forming it and start to justify my my role and now it's it, it is a mainstream devops and then yeah. secops is the same or uh, it's like machine learning is is the old <laughs> is the old beauty I, I had people just talking to me how do you see machine learning in security it's like machine learning has been in security take a bison network to, to detect spam it's been there since 15 or 20 years ago mm -hmm. it's always been there so I, I think i think there is there is a little bit of inventing but yeah, people no, I, start somewhere. I guess in our field, it just when, when they are. Oh, I've lost you, Francesco. I don't know if that's me or you. 
Hello. Hello. Oh, you're back. You're in the room. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I'm just on mobile. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's kicking up fast, I guess. It's but, doing very well. No, well done. <laughs> yeah, no, my mobile is, is holding on strong. Well done. Well done, mobile. Uh, but I'm saying, it, I think you just start somewhere. You start solving a problem and just building up. I, I don't know if you mm-hmm. will start on the, on the infrastructure. I start on the infrastructure, for example, and then moved into, into software. You probably took yeah. a, another path. But it doesn't um, matter ultimately. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. Yeah, maybe more from the application side of things. But I, I, I think we is, you know, we use the phrase in um, kind of agile and sprint-based methodologies of talking about failing fast. Well, I think we need to have the opportunity to do that in our in our industry as well, right? So, you know, you, you I don't see enough kind of cyber apprenticeship programs, right? Where, you know, you're going to spend three months in an organization working in, um, incident response and you'll spend three months working in architecture and you'll you'll spend three months working in you, you know various different areas be those aligned to specific domains or or, or be those kind of cross-functional and I don't know maybe, maybe the end user world's changed since I was there you know coming up to four years ago but f- from my kind of IISP engagements from from various discussions I don't see that it is right I see that people are expected to know very early on in their career which which kind of branch of cyber that they want to go into and and i don't always think that that's that's best if i'm if i'm brutally honest i don't agree with that as well because when i first started i tried all these things okay from a technical background and i had to constrain myself to do cyber security so i tried hacking forensics um, and then um trc stuff and i realized well, I, I don't have time to run a business plus uh, yeah. keep up with all the hacking technologies and mm-hmm. everything uh, because I got a really bad memory. I can't remember all these commands sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I had to then move on to leadership uh, and GRC stuff. So, you know, where you go and advise the C-level uh, mm-hmm. and then all more into doing sort of like um, virtual CISO uh, kind of advice. and. Yeah. Uh, ISO release and things like that. That's purely because, I mean, I initially thought, oh, these are boring. I don't want to do that kind of stuff. I want to get into pen testing. But then I realized, um, no, it's not for me. And I had to change uh, direction and do something different. So I spend most of my time doing audits and um, gap assessments and things like that. And also talking to C-level people. Mm-hmm. I, I, I never thought I'd like it. I love it. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's it's how you find yourself doing and enjoying what you do. Mm-hmm. But how much of that was your own, um, without putting words in your mouth, how, how much of that was your own, I suppose, determination and, and proactivity as opposed to there being an opportunity within a specific organization for, I don't know, applying, actually, I'll go back a step. I, I, I think that if we're going to better protect organizations, the people who work in architecture need uh, uh, at least a rudimentary understanding of how the SOC function works. And those in the SOC function need to understand how AppSec works and those in AppSec, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I suppose my point, if I, if I articulate myself a little bit better, is I don't see enough of that. I don't see enough of that cross I actually work. have another another point that we were discussing on the panel today that they said every company is a data company is is like an engineering company everybody needs to be an engineer even architect I've mm-hmm. seen a lot of architects that said or a lot of CISO uh, back to your point that says I'm a CISO I'm not interested in the technical stuff it's bloody wrong <laughs> like, uh, um, you're, yeah you're recording this call I won't give my view on that but yeah yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. I can yeah. I can edit it afterwards so I can pause <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I think I, go on, sorry, Chris. No, 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 no. I was just gonna kind of support what Francesco was saying there. I I in fact I think I was with my I'm doing some personal training at the moment. I think it was my personal trainer I said this to I said it, it's it's strange that there is this view that you can be and I'm doing kind of quotation marks here, you can be a non technical and and you can interpret non-technical in any in any way you want see so in you know you don't have and i don't want to be i'm not sure maybe i do want to be quoted on this i'm not sure you know but you don't have somebody who's you know a driving instructor who says they don't know how to reverse do you it's 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 it, to me it's kind of like that right we're in a we're in a fundamentally technical discipline now there are obviously very kind of important intrinsic 
components around um, psychology and around behavior. Of course, there are. You know that because we're humans more are, people. I mean, we're all people, stakeholders. Right? We, we are but ultimately you know at, at its crudest most fundamental level we are ones and zeros that it's a very it's a digital discipline that we're working in so I, I don't expect all CISOs to to understand the specifics and the nuances of how AES works but I expect potentially to understand strengths and weaknesses of particular crypto algorithms I think that is a fair baseline I have this discussion argument with um many people who disagree with me but that that's kind of my view is that you you have to have firstly a passion for what we're doing because i think someone on the call mentioned it earlier everything changes so quickly but um but yeah i think you have to have a baseline level of technical knowledge i don't, I don't know what's everyone else think yeah i think i agree completely because uh if you don't have that technical knowledge at least the basics then you could be fooled into things i've, I've had where people come and tell me things and i know that's not right because you, you know when you're going through that technical side um, experience where you start everything from scratch to understanding how things are architect, uh, designed and built, uh, then you know okay this is this doesn't make sense if sometimes someone says something that you don't agree with. So you you have that knowledge to understand things. Otherwise, if you just come from only one platform or one background, say for example risk, yes you will understand risk better, but you need to also have to understand, like you said, technical things, at least the basics. Um, so I, I completely agree with that. Let me be the devil advocate in here and let me say I disagree by principle just to, to, to spark yeah, good. the discussion. But I can, I can actually provide, jokes aside, I can actually provide an example where I've seen somebody really, really technical not being able to disconnect from the technical side and not caring on the business. It was somebody really into risk and control but from a technical perspective and getting so close to the technology that they understand that the business was fine with a specific risk i know i can count and obviously i'm not going to name them i know i know lots of people who kind of fit that mold like i, it, I don't it's, it's a risk it's yeah, a, it, risk. It, it is a risk but they're not mutually exclusive are they like you, no of absolutely course. not yeah i think i think being open-minded and being able to recognize when you get sucked into more technical or less technical, it's just being nimble. I think the yeah. key ability, and you can quote me on this, on a CISO is being nimble between the stakeholder engagement, the high level engagement yeah. and the technical side and being able to go and dip in a little bit more technical or actually admit failure and say, I don't know this stuff. I'll hire an expert or I'll get somebody yeah. view on it. And it's like, it's absolutely fine. And some people have seen, have seen CISO terrified of actually saying, I don't know this stuff. It's absolutely yeah. fine. No, I, I, people agree that that. I agree with you on that. I didn't mean by saying risk people aren't, you know, they're not better. Uh, but what I meant was, yes, security is all about risk. If you don't talk risk and if you're a security professional, then I don't, I can't take someone seriously, you know, because it's yeah. all about managing your risk. What I meant was uh, it is advantageous to have some kind of technical knowledge or gain that technical skill set or refer to someone before making those decisions because you know if you don't we, we deal with a lot of technology these days and it is quite advanced and sometimes we don't have the all the skills to understand how things work and it is good to know how the at least some sort of technical um uh, how things work so that you can make yeah. better decisions or informed decisions that's i think that's what i mean hello can I just Sherry. can I just say something really quickly here? It was actually about it was actually about to ask Jorin and Rebecca to <laughs> jump in and, and, and give their five cents and say what they're interested in. Hundred percent. So um just um just to kind of add to that point that Christopher was saying, so I've worked in the IT industry for eleven years and I worked in security for three years, but mm. my role in security was I was hired through a former colleague uh, who, who, who then worked for an information security consultancy uh, to work as a PCI DSS QSA and consultant. Yep. So I did that for three years um, and that was my introduction to secure, the security world. And I actually found during that process that I wanted to move from PCI DSS compliance to a more technical part of security. However, 
I felt pigeonholed. I really, really struggled with trying to move from, I've struggled 100%. I have got a new job though, so I have to tell you about that afterwards, Francesco. <laughs> I've got a job starting next Yay! Week. Yay, next Well month. done. But it is, and just further to add, because I, Christopher, you said, you mentioned about lack of sort of initiatives within the industry to sort of help people like there's nothing really to train people in different areas of security mm -hmm. unless maybe a company kind of brings it takes it upon themselves to do that so i actually what i'm doing is i'm working with an organization they found me um and they're working with an investment bank uh as like a return to work program so it's almost because i had a career break so i took it sorry i didn't mention so i worked in PCIDSS uh, as a QSA for three years. And then I took a career break after I got married. Um, and then it was, it was then that I only wanted to sort of return to work like recently. Um, so from November, December, and I think I got in contact with Francesco only like two months ago, I think Francesco it was, it hasn't been that long, has it? No. Um, so, yeah, so that, that it's essentially this return to work program through a career break and they actually it it just so happens they want somebody and uh, the director um of the, the technology area wanted somebody because to work across lots of different areas across it security so there will be the risk side there will be the um compliance may i don't think there'll be compliance i know that's handled separately um there will be a bit of pen testing so because i haven't decided exactly what i want to do within it the it security side mm -hmm. she actually wants somebody who's gonna work she's got like a team of 10 in that team and um she wants somebody who will kind of just try and work across all those areas and she said to me during my interview um, that she struggled to find somebody at that level who wasn't like a complete beginner and I wasn't who wasn't completely you know an expert, expert but somewhere in the middle she said everybody tends to have um, specialized and yeah. for me it's more it's been my whole career my whole journey has been trying to find that that area that I want to work in and it's been a long process so um, yeah so there's hope so the interview yeah. is starting to do it but I have to say, because um, I was in Singapore for Black Hat Asia, yep. and I met quite a few different, I met a lot of women there um, from Australia, and I met one lady who, complete, not, not technical at all, but through going to meetups, through um, engaging with the community, through listening to what people were saying, take, you know, t taking a proactive approach to learning things, um, she was able to actually get a job in, in a pretty technical role, but it's because that role obviously has um, training as well. So she's able to upskill, but she doesn't have like, like probably all of us have, you know, computer science degrees, um, but she doesn't. So there's hope, there's hope from, from that perspective as well. But the general feeling that I've got from people, that from people who I've met who were, either trying to get into security from technology or from different areas is it's very difficult it's it's difficult to and we, we discussed that in, break in, the wall. in sort of meeting uh with you know issues with cvs and things like that and it's it's the, it seems to be the face-to-face -face approach seems to work best yeah i think networking okay. works best but i think you, you nail one point that i've seen in the industry and chris like your view on it as well that we say there is a massive skill shortage, but as, as you say, Chris, there is not the will or not that much effort in actually getting people in security. And for this specific reason, I do a lot of non-security event when I talk about security. I say, you can be a security expert, just come along the journey. That's yeah. why I, I pledge myself not to do one or two or three maximum security conference per year, but the majority of it is actually cross industry event and say, yeah. Have you, have you gone again? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, so it was okay. just it's like a five second pause. That was all. No, no, go, go on, go on. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, are we not our own worst enemies on that one, though? I, th I think if you think about, and I can only speak from personal experience, I think for a long time, the security function was not even figuratively, I mean, quite literally, 
behind locked doors, weren't we? Like you'd go into an organization and the security function would, and I don't just mean the SOC, in some organizations, I mean like the entire security function would be behind like a key padded door or you'd need special entry requirements. And I think because of that, it, it kind of, I suppose, peddled or exacerbated this view that it's a dark art, right? That, you know, everything from long lines of bash scripts running on a screen in the matrix through to, you know, I suppose parodies and, and memes on things like South Park is that what we do is incredibly complicated and technical. And remember the speed, the faster you type on the keyboard, the more hacker you are. <laughs> Yeah, this is it, right? Yeah, so everyone I actually, thinks. actually, just just as a joke, and then then I can leave you back. Uh, I found a, a a question on Quora on saying uh, how can I become a hacker, and uh, and the answer was by writing really, really fast or, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it, it's unfortunately true in some cases, isn't it? And I think I think that has that has been a challenge. I'm, and again, it's something else I wrote recently around around the skill shortage. Like I try and stay out the debate as much as I can because I think there are various different views views on it. But um, and one of them that doesn't add up to me is that, you know, cyber salaries, and again, you you know, anyone who's done any kind of statistical analysis knows that you can skew figures to, to suit an article, but are generally perceived to be growing at a higher rate than other salaries in kind of quote unquote technical roles. So Not we have you're... Not if you're in UK. In US, it's just, it's just a massive uh, gap. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, I think glo I, as global, again, being a, a catch-all for quite literally everyone, I think the, the view or the, the point that I was trying to make there is why when, you know, the salaries are, are there for cybersecurity, why potentially are people not taking those roles? And is it is it the fault of, and I think the answer to this is everyone, but is it HR agencies and recruiters just having wish list specs? Is it a kind of reluctance or reticence around you not fulfilling the requirements of a role? Is it that, you know, there aren't genuinely enough people qualified for the demand that we've got? I think there's, there's maybe some of that, or are we just poor at recruiting? I, I, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I think, you know, as we've all kind of said on this call thus far, um, I think the major challenge is we're expected to, go into an organization and work in a specific area of security and almost work vertically in that, in that very specific area. And I think the more I think about this, in fact, is, you know, security is ultimately about what four things really confidentiality, integrity, or okay. Death might be one now with, with kind of IOT systems, but CIA brand reputation and loss of life, right? We can, this is why I think people have such a challenge with risk because we start to talk about, sort of threat events and vulnerabilities uh, interchangeably and we don't really understand what risk is i don't i don't think but we're there ultimately to give advice right we're there to reduce risk in an organization to a palatable level and if we're going to do that i think as a as a community as a security um kind of quorum almost we need to have appreciation of what those different areas in our functions are doing i think it'd be a great idea to just have people do job swaps you know, if it's a week, if it's shadowing someone in a different area of security, yeah. because I don't know what other people feel, but I don't know many organizations that. who do that. Yeah, I've seen that because I have had that experience in the past and that's how I cross with myself. So, you know, you need to give your staff uh, the uh, uh, opportunity to shadow people and cross train so that that way you can find what you really like and enjoy and also for potentially move into and also it's a it's a function where you know when you have cross skilled uh, people you can use them when there's a problem or you know disaster yeah. happens and and the, the job thing i think there is also a um problem where recruiters are uh, job specs are done wrong so you're looking for the right skill set with the right wrong uh, um, and the the wrong people Sort of like if you look at some of the um, entry level cybersecurity roles, they are expecting like years of experience, there's CISP and all these other things. And sometimes you think, uh, is it really an entry level job? Yeah. Or, you know, the, the, the way that people have um, written these job descriptions are not um, 
uh, good enough, I think, in my opinion, some of them at least, where you see that uh, they are creating different roles, but what they're expecting is a different person who doesn't really match those skills. So, you know, you, you, if you're looking for that kind of unicorn, where are you going to find that? I, 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 yeah, I agree. With you. I think there's also a why, isn't there? Like I've been, I have been guilty in the past in security organisation. Well, in my organisation, as someone who's running the security function, to sit down with an HR team and say, right, well, I'll have CISPA's kind of like a, a kind of an entry level requirement. And I don't mean for junior members of staff, but I mean maybe for, I don't know, designer, architect, engineer. I say, right, CIS. Now, that's not necessarily that I need the specific. Um, attributes of someone who has it in the sense of the I can't remember how many domains ISC squared have now I'm gonna guess eight whatever How, however many there are in CIS is it many 20 years. or they change it to eight oh, I don't know <laughs> I, I, no, I don't listen to what I'm saying like, I haven't done it for I, I think I did my CIS like 10 12 years ago so um, but my, my point is it's not that I necessarily need the CISP tool set in an organization i think a lot of a lot of CISOs or a lot of hr teams use it as just like a, a baseline right they use it as a starter for 10 to say okay if they spent the time to kind of diligently understand the isc squared domains and you know mm. it's incredibly hard to brain dump a CISP, this is somebody with at least the commitment to cyber security that's the way i look at a CISP. It's, yeah. it's someone who's invested the time um yeah. and it's a, it's a leadership qualification so you don't have that kind of you can't get that until you worked in the industry for few years so if you're expecting that kind of qualifications from a young person or grad you're looking for the wrong person totally yeah i mean you should give them the opportunity to be trained just because they come out of a cyber security degree doesn't mean they know everything i've interviewed so many grads where they don't even know what goes in a pen test report so what do they actually learn in the university you know they yeah. They're saying, okay, they have a BSc in cybersecurity, but doesn't even know the basics of what a real life job does. So if you don't give them the opportunity to come on board and learn on the job, then you can't grow people. You can't develop their skills. Yep. Couldn't agree more. I think there's Sorry, a... I was just, I was still talking on mute. <laughs> I, I, I assumed I was about to chime in. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. <laughs> it's the whole, isn't it the wonderful world of conference call? I think I've seen, I've seen a couple of videos where, the, where people in live were trying to reproduce a conference call where they were uh, talking on each other or saying on mute and stuff like that. It's, it's wonderful sometimes. That, that, must be, that must be the most said... I think the most said phrase, the most repeated phrase on, on any kind of Zoom call is, are you on mute? Like more, than, more than anything else. Or can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me and are you on mute? Yeah. Are you still there? They're the three. All right. So I think, Rebecca, do you have an opinion on it? Rebecca? I think you're on mute. <laughs> All right. I think I uh, don't know how to say. Uh, sorry, is it Imani? Im sorry, I, I'm so bad. I'm not even going to attempt how to pronounce his name. He's, he's said that um, I keep on getting a feeling security is a different world of its own. I would like to know why you feel that. You're on mute, by the way, if you're talking. <coughs> Okay. Because <laughs> that's an interesting point, and I've heard that from other people as well. Yeah, I think I think coming coming inside security from a different world, it might be overwhelming, or at least I I feel sometimes it's overwhelming because you had to look at so many domains and. If you talk, if, it, if you're on application security and maybe you start talking about application security, you go in there and you see people with massive expertise because maybe they have a dev background and you consider yourself and you don't feel up to scratch or you don't feel like you're adding anything. So I think the advice from my perspective, and, and I might be wrong here, and please give, give me your five cent perspective, but go back to the principle. Ultimately, security is just a bunch of principle that you can apply to anything. 
I think it's it's about understanding the basics. That's one of the reasons why I developed the Shisiso platform, uh, the bootcamp. It, it is about giving them that bridging knowledge where you, you learn it about enough about each knowledge so then you can make your own decision as to which domain you want to master was you know specialize in so that way you know you don't feel like it's unknown area or something that you don't know because there's so much stuff that we don't know when it comes to security but if you can identify the basics and take it from there i think you know you're getting somewhere other than just not knowing anything about each domain no, I agree, and I, and I think we need more and more on that. And uh, to the, I like CISP and I hate CISP, but I think the good that it does, it, it gives people that doesn't know where to start a, a beginning, a beginning field or a beginning direction. So it says this is, these are the domains. This is the areas that you should look at, and then you can go and explore and and become a specialist. So that's that's a good part of I think CIS that is doing, and and we need to do more. So I think we need to run like cross events or, you know, educational events where we say this is how you start security, and that's what the whole purpose of of this this um, this call was about. It's like how do you start into security? Yeah, it's, I, I mean, my personal experience, I, what got me into specializing in security was um, the frustrations because, you know, you, you go into projects, you design the environment and then the security comes last, tick box. Have we done pen test? Have, we, have the security been passed? Has the QA done? And then you think, actually, you should be thinking about security from right from the start, you know, and, yeah. and yeah. that's kind of, what led me to think, okay, you know, we need to, there's, it's just the basics and the common sense that you need to first. I've been hammering on that security is everybody's responsibility. And I've been told off sometimes, but uh, I think I find a very powerful quote that gets the message through and saying, I have a slide in, in, in each of my presentation, I put a slide where I say, these are the recent data breach. And this is why security is also your responsibility because your data might be in there. So as a, as a, bastion host of your organization you had to embed security because it could be your data that get exposed so just consider that whatever the organization you're working with your data might get exposed and consider customer data as your data and that's the biggest challenge i think francesco isn't it is i don't know i i, I think getting getting the people who get, getting data ownership I don't think, and from the CISOs and CIOs that I talk to on a daily basis, is as big a challenge today as it's ever been, right? D despite CCPA, GDPR, whichever other regulation or acronym you want to use, is you know getting people to understand that the security function designs controls commensurate with a level of risk. You tell us that level of risk by defining and classifying your data and your assets, your applications, and and various different. Um, I suppose classifications and, and I, I still see challenges that, you know, you go into an organization and ask them what, ask them for traceability from a set of business processes through to a, a, a kind of catalog of applications, the infrastructure that supports them and the data that resides on that infrastructure. I, I'm not saying all organizations, because I know some organizations that are brilliant at it, but a lot of the time that doesn't exist. And if that doesn't exist, then how can we, how can we enforce or stand by security as everyone's responsibility? It becomes, it becomes challenging, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it does. Yeah, it is. It is. And this has been, I think, uh, it's not just on the security side. It's also when the people try to reinvent, uh, people trying to reinvent an application and they don't really understand what data they hold or what that application is about. So I talked with a lot of enterprise architect and, there is that confusion in, in that field as well. It's like, what do you want that application to do? And, and, and Pisa said, well, I don't know. It's like, whatever it does before. And then, then when you ask, well, what, what was that application doing before? And they said, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it's not just security that the experience been for. I think it's the due diligence on, on IT is, is poor. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. With, with the whole DevOps, there seems to be a license to go fast. 
and it's fair enough. I mean, time to market is critical, but there is also the recognition that some things like foundation, foundational project require time. Understand big data project is like because you're checking your data all in one in one location doesn't mean that you have control over your data or you even understand what your data is. Very few organizations that have been across have seen a, a serious effort to build a data model, unless it's a big transformation, unless you have some data savvy people that, that talk to the board and say, you have to spend this amount of time to actually understand your data. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree with that completely. So it's, security is nothing else than doing things right, ultimately. and and. I don't know why in security, I don't know. I'll, I keep on telling the, the story of if you build a bridge and you don't take time to, to build the pillar right, the, build, the bridge collapse and people die. If you build an IT system to maintain a hospital and you don't spend time to capture requirement, people die. But IT seems to get away with that for some reason and keep on getting away with it. I, I don't know why. That, that, that's something that kept on puzzling me for since the beginning of being in this field. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, sorry, I have to leave. Um, I, I apologize. Uh, I've got something come up. I'm sorry. Uh, it was nice talking to you. I'll speak to you again later on, hopefully, in the next sessions. Absolutely. Really enjoyed it. Thank um, you, Shuri. Thank you, Johnny. All right, sorry. I'm just reading up one thing that La Lamni is saying. So it's saying doing application security and also software development is, is complicated. When you consider it, it seems to be too deep and separate world. He's from the front web. How one managed to be in between, and I think that's that's absolutely correct. Um, it's we tend to keep on preaching now with Dev DevSecOps the fact that we need to upskill the security, the engineer into security engineer, but we don't give them the tool. Mm -hmm. So I think from yeah. a tooling perspective, from an architect perspective, the tool are principal requirement, guidance, blueprints, best practice to enable people to go at speed. And it's just saying, well, secure your web development and then you have the web error and say, okay, how? It's like, yep. take our uh, top uh, 10, take blueprints, yeah. take, for example, on a very clear example that, that, that I came across on, a, on, a, on an Apache Tomcat, it's like, well, here's the blueprint on, on how to harden up the, the Tomcat. And it's common by common. And, it's not in security wise, it's not in hardcore, it's just one sequence of comments after the other. And they were happy to do it and that, that became the reference standard and really doing the basic, really the simple thing. Chris, what do you think about it? I, yeah, I, I don't even think it, well, it is the how, obviously it's the how on, on many occasions, but it's the why. Like the biggest challenge that I've seen, right? And again, this is me going, but harking back to end user world. But the challenge that I would see, and this is this is kind of, typical in a waterfall based project engagement with pen testing at a particular stage what i would see happen is pen test report gets produced it said it doesn't matter what it says but let's say it says there are cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in your web app in these particular form fields you need to consider um sanitizing input and encoding output you need to do it on all these different areas i mean you go and tell a developer who's now moved on to another project that he now or she needs to go back and kind of, I suppose, retrofit um, he, whatever it is, escaping or whatever they're doing within, within a particular app. And, you know, that doesn't get prioritized, right? It just, it just doesn't, generally, generally speaking, in an organization. And I do think that has a lot to do with the, the, the why that that's important. I, I think, maybe I'm wrong, I think m most developers these days understand maybe the how is that fair am i maybe i'm not fair in that in that you know using particular apis that you know are secure or understanding some of the um good practice recommendations but i sometimes think i sometimes think we sit in this i don't want to call it an ivory tower but we sit we as do. a security 
perception. We do, don't we? We sit, we sit and we say, thou must go and change this because we work in security. And, and then we don't. don't. Say how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't say how. We don't say why it's important. And getting back to get, getting people to take ownership and responsibility for for cyber security. Of course, we have to win hearts and minds. And that's that. Everyone's busy. That's what we forget, right? Yeah. People don't do shitty security practice because they're they want into, to, right? but because yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're rushed into. They're rushed into doing it. They've got very strict deadlines on something. I don't know. They've got to work with, I don't know, legacy or deprecated libraries. They're doing whatever it is. They, you know, I, I, I think that is that is one of our biggest failings in cybersecurity. I think is that we I assume everyone has. I think yeah, in yeah maybe is, so. Yeah, I think you're right. Security needs some time and doing things at speed and and giving best practice, even giving the best practice in get, and doesn't mean that people can actually. It requires time to think. Yeah. I mean, the more requirement you add, the more complexity you add, even, even if you want to build simplicity. But I, I assume you'll be coming back imminently. <laughs> there you you are. lost me again. That, 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 was, that was right on cue though, mate. That was really good. <laughs> it was, I'll, I'll say it's a programmatic pause. I'm yeah. trying to make drama. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, dramatizing you. Maybe you're right. You're right. It's it's systemic, right? It's an issue of IT. It's security. But you know, people want things immediately. I think is 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 a major challenge. And I'm not saying people look for shortcuts, but you know, if we don't have, and this is another, I think, top down challenge in organisations. If we don't have security and assurance and integrity and quality of applications on everyone's balance scorecard, on everyone's you know, job requirements, people's bonuses depending on this, people don't care, right? Yeah. You know, they, they don't, you know, it's no good us caring if we're not incentivizing and motivating other people to, to give but a also, toss about As you said, also incentivizing and motivizing, making it rewarding. So yeah. if, if a team, if a specific team is actually embedding security, give them a prize, give them a recognition. Give them a yep. crown or a badge or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. it's both ends. Security doesn't need to be the guy with a big bad stick that goes around and, and bash people in the head. It's also a recognition of actually who's, who, who do things right. And as you said, make it worth their pain by actually linking the security vulnerabilities of a specific application to the bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's an idea. I'm, I'm not sure that's going to work in every multinational organization, but I, I think certainly the principles should be, be applied. And that's how you get security to be everyone's responsibility. Like I, yeah. I get a little bit sick and tired of hearing it without organizations having kind of traceability of how, how that's going to be applicable to them. Yeah. Or, how, or maybe how they're going to implement it. You know, saying it at a board level and saying, yes, in our company, security is everyone's responsibility. You're like, okay, cool. What does that actually mean? Like, you know, how, how do you go about enforcing that? Yeah. And making it, making it worthwhile, I'm, I'm not going to quote the company or where I've seen it to make it generic enough, but it works. Publish mm -hmm. the data, publish the data, pub, make, making it linked to, the, to, to people bonus. If you achieve this, this amount of release or this amount of fixes at this quarter, you get your bonus. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. Period. And at that right. point, people will try to do whatever they can to actually do their fixes. And they're going to come and ask you for how, how I'm going to do it. It's like, but at that point in time, it's their problem. It's not their responsibility. I have to say it's hurtful, but it's their problem as well. Yeah. They Completely. feel it close to their chest, close to their heart. It's not anymore a push, but a pull from team to security. Then at the other point, linking to your point is how you need the security team needs to be geared up to actually reply to those questions. Otherwise, it all of a sudden it becomes a bottleneck. Yeah, and that, and that is yeah that that is something that I think is going to continue to be an issue. Right, if you've got, I always use sort of Facebook and, and Amazon as my examples here. But you know, if you've got organisations who are releasing daily like seventy thousand commits. I've, I've literally made that figure up. I can't remember how many it is, but yeah, you know, you've, you've got continuous integration going on in these organizations. How possibly do you have enough? And I'm not going to get into a machine learning automation conversation today. We can do that at another, at another session, but you know, how, how do you provide consultancy to, 
to these organizations or to these particular business functions when you know we're very used in security to the to having like a two-week lead time right someone does a pen test that takes a week maybe two days to a week it's then a week to document findings you then present the findings people then argue about what's getting fixed and what isn't then about three months later something gets fixed and then the project goes live that literally doesn't happen anymore right you know when you no. can when you can just throw code at AWS, it's at Lambda, for example. Yeah, Lambda literally having Yeah, just having like literally zero infrastructure. You can send that stuff live in like two minutes. So I, I think we, I think in some organizations we're doing a good job of becoming cross-functional and there's, there's almost no security function now. There's just a security person who works on a project. But in, in the majority of organizations that, that, that maybe I speak to, about this subject that's still something that they're doing as innovation you know the core business mm. is still run on these antiquated ways of these ways of doing things i think but, but I, I think i think at that uh, quoting my point and quoting the pain i'm going through there will be always be two speeds so the target operating model of is where everything is integrated and everybody has the time to actually do security but is is a revolution and it's an evolution matrix where team ramp up to that to that vision but mm -hmm. you still need governance so for sure for example how did you how did you go for a company from starting from day zero in in aiming that they have a, a, a sec dev uh, sec devops practice and that everybody get a, a pace at speed at and and do things securely so you start you start choking project inside governance and that's fine at the beginning if you have a vision to aim for that that target, mm -hmm. you know, you start producing patterns, you start producing best practice guidance, you start getting security architect ingrained with other architect and with the various project. And it's fine to go slow at the beginning and to choke project, just choose the battle that you want to win and the other one that you want to ignore. Have right, you right. come across, have you come across some, some organization that does that good? I, I, yeah, I've dealt with a large number of organizations, well, a, a fair number of organizations who are implementing roles like the business security officer and kind of the security champion within DevOps teams. And, you know, just, just, just rethinking, rethinking this, the, the, the model and, and, and how we work within, within companies, because, you know, we, we are a business function. I, I hate it. Hate's maybe a strong word. I, I dislike it when we when we talk about you know, embedding security. Well, yeah, <laughs> embedding, embedding, embedding security in business strategy. I'm like, why are we doing it? Like, we're, we're intrinsic. We're integral to business strategy. We, you know, that's, that's the mind shift that I think we need to do is rather than thinking we're on the periphery and we need to sort of push and shove our way into what the business is doing. You know, you look at, you know, I suppose detrimental effects or business disruption in, in a lot of large organizations and they're caused by digital means. They're caused by cyber attacks. Like not always. Sometimes it's, I don't know, users doing something they shouldn't, but, but, but broadly speaking, it's technology. Technology mm -hmm. is, is this, you know, absolute blessing for a lot of organizations going through this digital transformation, but they're, they're going through that and technologies, you know, like I said, intrinsic or integral to, to their business. But as soon as that happens, then cybersecurity also has to be as prepared and geared up. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and, and maybe it's not, I don't think. No, I don't think, I, th I think organization are getting there and there is a balance. Um, we're getting there. I think we're getting there. DevSecOps, I think, is, is a new word. Architecture as a practice is, is still learning how to, how to interact with DevOps and DevSecOps. I, I think we are, we are getting our transformation. I think from what I'm seeing, the world is getting used to the word cloud and is getting out for the word DevOps or DevSecOps. So it's going to take some time to actually find a new balance. And by the time I guess we find a new balance, it's going to change. The world is going to change again yeah. <laughs> for security. We'll, we'll have, yeah. <laughs> we'll have just, yeah, we'll have just got used to it and then, and then things will pivot. <laughs> but we, should, we should run a session on cloud. I mean, again, that was a, the subject of, of my MSc dissertation actually was demystifying some of the risks of public cloud computing. And I, and I think some of those principles aren't just cloud orientated. They would apply for insert contemporary technology here so blockchain machine learning 
whatever, you know. Cool. Yeah. I have to close because they're kicking me yeah. out of the conference. Likewise, but... I, I have to jump on something else as well. I've really enjoyed this, guys. Yes, uh, I think we need to run another session maybe on, on the other questions and uh, getting get more of the question. Maybe if we prepare the, some, some question on the Slack channel for next yeah, one so that we can shoot them fire and, and have them all ready uh, and sure. distributed. And se send me access to the Slack channel as well. I don't Absolutely. know what the workspace is. Great Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, we'll do. Okay, Thank you, Chris. Uh, Thank you, Shireen. Absolute pleasure. Thank See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye, Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Cheers. Bye. Bye.